Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Navi McGee. I'm a senior solutions architect with AWS, and I would like to welcome you to the session on how can I reduce costs for my AppStream 2.0 deployment. Has your manager asked you to reduce your overall bill with AWS? Have you wondered if you're turning all of the knobs possible to be able to reduce your costs? Well, these are just some of the key questions that we're going to target in today's session. Let's take a look at our objectives. We'll learn about key decision points on reducing costs. We'll see how fleet policies can assist with cost reduction. Then we'll see an AppStream demo that would allow us to see certain things we can adjust in order to reduce those costs. And then finally, we'll conclude with what's the gist of it? What's a few things that I can take away and implement today to have a cost effective AppStream solution? When we look at cost reduction, there are three key things to keep in mind. The first one is the running mode. And this should be one of the key considerations. Within AppStream, there are two running modes available. There's always on, and there's also on demand. Always on runs in a 24 seven state, and there's an hourly charge that's incurred per instance. This charge is there even if the user is not actively streaming the instance. But the instance is instantly available for the user. Once they click on the application, it will immediately launch for them. The second mode is on demand. The instance is launched for the user, but there's a one to two minute wait time that they'll need. And then the user will be able to consume the session and consume the application. With on-demand fleets, instances are charged only when the user is actively running the session. And when it's in a stop state, there's only a small instant stop state fee. The second point is fleet policies. This is very important. When looking at fleet policies, there are four different types of policies that you can use. Scaling out policies, scale in policies, schedule policies, as well as target tracking policies. Each one provides its own advantages and key to be able to reduce or drive down the cost for your Amazon AppStream fleet. We're gonna take a look at some key options that we can turn or tweak in order to drive down your costs as well. And the last one is right sizing the bundle. Uh, we have a wide array of options available in AppStream, multiple family types. So which one is the right one for you? Can you choose many different options? Do you have to select one? Well, those are some of the things we're gonna discuss as well. So let's look at the first one, running mode. Again, it's always on or on demand. But with always on, this is geared to an experience where your user is expecting an instant connection. Maybe you're an ISV or providing a SaaS solution or in an environment where your user has to do work that is very time sensitive, in which case you should use an always on instance type. For the other side for the running mode is also all on demand. And this can be used if there is an, a wait time that can be permitted for your user. So if they don't have a time sensitive application or work to do, or uh, they're able to use the application while waiting one to two minutes for it to launch. Now let's take a look at scaling policies. Again, there are scale out policies and there are scale in policies. When we look at the scale in policies, uh, this determines the size of a fleet. You can automatically increase or decrease the size of a fleet with uh, these type of policies. It allows you multiple counters to consider. One is the minimum capacity for the fleet. The other one is a maximum capacity. The minimum capacity will allow you to set the minimum number of instances that will be readily available for you, your users at any given time. And then for the maximum policy or in, uh, state, it allows you to set the number of maximum instances that will be allowed to scale out to for that particular fleet. There are also some other additional counters to keep in mind, such as actual capacity, capacity utilization, as well as desired capacity. These are important things to keep in mind when you're scaling out your fleet to a certain size. Now let's put some of these concepts together. How could we use a scale up policy to drive down the cost for our AppStream environment? 
Let's take an example that you have 100 users that you'd like to deploy a set of applications to. Uh, on a typical workday, uh, you know that maybe you'll need about 10 to 15 uh, instances readily available for your users. And you know that the maximum size for the workday will be a maximum of 100 users connecting in to consume those instances. So with that in mind, we're going to set our minimum capacity to 15 users or 15 instances and our maximum capacity for that policy to be 100. But with that in mind, this will allow us to grow our policies as we need them until we hit that maximum number. Now, as part of the scaling policy, you also are able to set at which percentage or threshold the auto scaling policy will start to increase your fleet. So if you're at 15 instances, and now that you decide, decide that if my instances that are readily deployed are consumed at 25% or 50%, I would like to increase the number of instances by two, by three, or by five until I reach the maximum number that's set. And that's something that you definitely can do with your scale up policies. On the other side, with scale in policies, we're going to do the inverse. We're going to reduce the fleet overall until we get down to the minimum capacity number that we've set. So in this case, if we say we want to scale in, well, we'll remove, let's say, one instance or two instances until the capacity is equal or less to that percentage. What's another type of policy we have? Well, there's also schedule policies. Now, with schedule policies, you're able to change the capacity of your fleet based off a of schedule. And this works well if you have a predictable workload. Let's say shift workers or set uh, demand or projects that will be used from a certain start time and a certain end time. So let's say, for instance, you know your users is coming on for the workday at 7 a.m. And you expect to have at least 50 users logging on early in the morning. Well, with schedule policies, now you can set a start time to ramp up or expand the fleet out to that minimum value that you set. So if the minimum value is 50 users for that early morning ramp up time, you can set it at 50 to have those instances readily available. And if your users will eventually for the day at 5 p.m., then you can also set it as well so that it can reduce the overall count from the maximum value that you set of 100 down to 50. This last type of policy that we have is called target tracking policies. And with target tracking scaling, you can specify capacity utilization for your fleet. And when you do this, you're in integrating it with other services that we have like call watch alarms that trigger the scaling policy. The scaling policy adds or removes capacity as required to keep the capacity utilization at or close to the specified target number. And again, this is something that you can control based off the policies that you set. Now we've considered four different policies, scale out policies, scale in policies, schedule policies, as well as target tracking policies. But what's one tip that you can take away from this? Well, that your scaling policy should be regularly monitored and reviewed. Why? Because at times you may need to adjust the minimum and maximum values. You may have more users connecting in than you originally expected. All of this would assist in ensuring that you have a fine-tuned policy so that you can have the most cost-effective solution possible running on AppStream. Now let's take a look at the next section, right size the bundle. Inside of AppStream, we have a wide array of family types. We start with general purpose, compute optimize, memory optimize, graphics pro, graphics design, and graphics G4. But what's one of the important things to keep in mind here? That one size doesn't fit all. You can have multiple fleets as well as multiple instance types deployed based off your application needs. So the first tip is to pick the right instance type for the job. Is the instance type a general purpose type where it's just basic computing resources for running web browsers or basic business applications? Is it a compute optimized instance that's needed so that it can uh, utilize the CPU that's allocated to the instance? Is it a memory optimized 
instance type or is it a graphics instance type where you need dedicated GPUs? Those are things that you should keep in mind. But again, you can have multiple types deployed, multiple fleets as well. And you can change the fleet at any time. There's no final decision that has to be made at the beginning. One thing to keep in mind is as you do this, keeping metrics is very important. Understanding the usage patterns of this, and you can definitely do this through AppStream usage reports as well. It keeps track of how the applications are used that have been deployed on, workspace, on, on AppStream and allows you to adjust accordingly the policies that you've deployed. Now let's take a look at a demo. A demo on how we can set policies that will allow us to have a cost-effective solution. Now we're going to take a look at the account that we have in North Virginia. We're going to click on Fleets, click on Create Fleet, then we'll create a name for this test fleet. We'll call it Test Fleet 1 and give it the same display name, click Next. Then we'll choose our test image. And here's where we can see all of the instance types available. We have general purpose, it shows you different vCPU allocation. We have compute optimize. And also we have memory optimize. For this example, we're going to stay with the general purpose option. And we'll also use the standard medium. Under fleet types, we can choose the fleet type of always on or on demand. On demand allows you to do a on demand instance when needed, and always on is instantly available. Will you choose on demand? Here you can set the maximum session duration in minutes, the disconnect timeout in minutes, or the idle disconnect as well. For fleet capacity, we'll leave that as default because we'll change that later. Under Stream View, you can select Application or Desktop. For this example, we'll use an application. We'll leave the rest as default and we'll click on Next. Here, we'll just select a VPC that we'll use to deploy our AppStream fleet, and along with two private subnets. Click Next. You can review the information for your fleet configuration, then click Create. Here, let's acknowledge the charges and click Create again. That's how you can choose the running mode for a fleet type, either always on or on demand. Now let's take a look at scaling policies. Here we have our minimum and maximum. But in this example, we're going to modify the maximum capacity and change it to 100. And then for minimum capacity, we'll set this to 25. So this tells us that at a minimum, we'll have 25 instances available for our users and maximum of 100. Now let's take a look at scale out policies. Add policy. Let's give it a new policy name. And here we'll say if capacity utilization is at a certain level, we'll change it. But there are some other options available as well. We'll say it's greater than or equal to We'll set it at 50%. And then here we can add a number of instances. We will say five and the unit as instance. And click Create. So this tells us that if capacity utilization is greater than or equal to 50%, then I'll add five instances to my fleet until I get to 100 maximum as my maximum capacity. Now let's take a look at scale in policies. Let's add policy. We'll give it a policy name. And here, just like before, we'll click on capacity utilization. We'll say is less than or equal to, and we'll set this to 25% this time. Then here we can say we can remove a number of instances. In this case, we'll set it to two instances and we'll click create as well. Now this scaling policy tells us that if capacity utilization is less than or equal to 25%, we'll remove two instances until we get to 25 minimum capacity. Now let's take a look at scheduled scaling policies. We'll give it a policy name. We'll give it a start date. 
as well as a start time. We'll set an end date as well as an end time. We're going to give this a minimum capacity of 50 with the same maximum capacity of 100. We'll set frequency to every day. So set it to one and then under the unit, we'll say day. Click create. So this tells us that now on a daily basis at 7 a.m., 50 instances will be provisioned for our users up to the maximum of 70. Then at the end, it will taper off as well down to the minimum capacity. This is just an example of how you can use scaling policies in your environment to deal with the demand that you have, whether it's scaling out, scaling in, or scheduled policies. Now, what are some of the key takeaways? Well, we've covered some key objectives throughout the session today, but what's the gist of it? What are some things we want to take back to share with our teams? One is the running mode, remembering that there are two types available, always on or on demand, and you're not tied to one specific running mode. You can easily change between the two. Also, the number of fleets, it's unlimited. You're not tied to a specific number of fleets uh, for your app stream deployment. If you need more fleets based off of the different instance types that are available, you can definitely do so for your business use cases. And then finally, scaling policies. Four options available, scaling out, scaling in policies, scheduled policies, and target tracking policies. With those key objectives in mind, you'll definitely be able to deploy a cost-effective solution running Amazon AppStream. And when you think about it, now you'll be able to say that, yes, I've turned all the knobs possible to make sure that I have the most cost-effective deployment running on AppStream. But how can you get started? What are some of the key things that you should look at in terms of best practices and also implementation guides that would assist you to take a deeper dive into this? Well, here are just some of the key links that you can review. Getting started with Amazon Workspaces, uh, set up with sample applications, how to do a getting started guide, as well as the different fleet types, as well as user workflows. My name is Navi McGee, and I'd like to thank you for joining the session today.